Ordinances for reconsideration by reason of the parish president's veto. 2013-0200. Mr. St. Pierre. Thank, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, my uh, veto message reads as follows. On May 20th, 2013, the St. Charles Parish Council adopted ordinance number 2013-0185 which amended ordinance number 13-3-14 by directing and mandating the parish president to execute said agreement on behalf of St. Charles Parish and to perform all obligations of St. Charles Parish under said agreement. For the following reasons, ordinance number 2013-0185 was not approved. Once again, the majority of the council has chosen to ignore the inherent and implement duties imposed upon the executive branch of parish government by the Constitution of the state and federal governments. While we are a charter form of government, the law that has been established for centuries cannot be ignored. Your oath of office compels you to uphold the Constitution of the United States. It is painfully apparent to the public that some members of the council believe that without Tozan Consultant, LLC as a lobbyist, the sky would have fallen out and our doom would have been met. This is a great, gross misconception and there are more and better lobbyists to be had for the asking. In fact, there are two lobbyists working for our parish through the GNO co Coalition. We pay monies to GNO to be a members, and GNO hired a lobbyist on the behalf of all the parishes to rep them, represent them during the, uh, to uh, the, defeat the Biggest Waters Act. The parish is therefore not without representation in Washington. Additionally, our congressional delegation has worked diligently to, to the Biggest Waters Act to have the Biggest Waters Act of 2012 amended to relieve insurance premium problems that would occur without amendments. This is a bill to place, th there is a bill to place this matter on hold for five years so that uh, th there is no immediate need for further Washington representation and no need to pay a lawyer with public funds for unnecessary purpose. The lawsuit could go on for two years before a final result might be reached at a rate of $175 per hour in lawyer's fee. And that's my veto message. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Foshe, I have you up. Are you looking to speak now? Sure. Okay. You know, I, I, I've read your address. And, you know, first I have to address the, to ignore the inherent and explicit duties imposed upon the executive branch. We're not ignoring anything. We're asking you to do your duty. This council, by charter, can appoint the chairman to sign that contract. We would prefer just to have the administration do it. There is no immediate need for further Washington representation because there's an amendment made to hold the bill for five years. Um, that is totally unacceptable. I don't know who is giving guidance that we need no further Washington representation over the Biggest Waters Act, but that's nowhere near the truth. And you know, the last, I keep addressing the word of bill, and uh, I, I've read numerous responses to the word of bill from Mary Landrieu, uh, Vitter's office, uh, Steve Scalise's office. Uh, Steve Scalise is on the uh, word of board. Uh, also looking at, uh, received uh, information from the Mississippi Valley Flood Authority, uh, which ha houses all the authority for all of the levy boards uh, along the entire Mississippi Valley. And they have a list of projects that they're submitting to WERDA for authorization. If we have two lobbyists that are working for us that are doing all of this stuff in Washington, D.C., uh, I'm going to put on the next council agenda an item and I would like a report on where we stand as a parish authorizing our West Bank levy and our pumps. I'm going to put it on the agenda. You can choose to go or not. But you say you have two lobbyists who are doing everything we need in Washington, D.C. And so I will put it on the agenda. I will ask for a report on where we stand on WERDA and the authorization for our own levies and pumps. Mr. Cockle? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. This is much deeper than just a lobbyist at this point. This is, um, this is the way we operate. This council 
uh, voted for something. Mr. Mr. St. Pierre vetoed it, which is his right. And this council overrode that veto. So this needs to be put into action. To, to sit and say, I'm not going to sign it, it's just it's ludicrous. We can't, we can't operate like that, Mr. St. Pierre. I understand your, uh, your concerns, and um, this is the way the charter's been set up. This is the way we've operated. This is the first time we've come to an impasse where we've had a veto, it's been overridden, and the parish presidents refused to sign it. You know, who's to say if you don't agree with us next time, you're going to do the same thing? This is very important to get this resolved. This is the very fabric of our charter. You know, this is what you fought for in Vietnam. It really is. So to say, you know, it's just about a lobbyist, it's, it's not no more. It's about our process that's in place that that is law. That is law. Thank you. Ms. Perrier. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, two things I'd like to address out of your veto message, Mr. St. Pierre. First, um, some words along the lines of the sky. If, if we didn't have the Tozan group, the sky would fall in and our doom would be met. Take a little bit of offense to that, and I think uh, the people of the West Bank should as well. Our doom may be met. It very well may. So um, I think that's making light of the situation a little bit, and I don't appreciate that. Um, second, I think it's now only about principles and legalities at this point. Um, you know, we needed the Tozan group. That's neither here nor there. Now it's just what's the right and legal thing to do. So that's how I feel about it. Thank you. Okay. 2013-0185. An ordinance to amend ordinance number 13-3-14 to direct and mandate that the parish president execute the agreement approved therein. Ordinance number 13519 um, has been vetoed by the parish president and shall be reconsidered by the council. Uh, shall ordinance 13519 pass, the veto of the parish president is notwithstanding. In other words, does the council wish to override the veto of the parish president? Yes, overrides it. No, veto stands. And we will need six or more to override the veto. 2013-0185. Do we want to have par council discussion? No. Okay. Please cast your votes. So uh, that the veto stands with uh, Ms. Fletcher, Mr. Woodruff, and Ms. Schecksneider voting nay.